All right, I'm Dr. William Stiles. I am the prostate coach. And today we're talking about the five things you can learn early on in your diagnosis of prostate cancer. And you can learn these five things and know more about your specific type of prostate cancer. There's many different types and subtypes of prostate cancer. And knowing your specific type is very important in helping navigate making that treatment decision and ultimately getting the treatment that's right for you. The first thing is the biopsy. The prostate biopsy that was done, the old ultrasound biopsy or the MRI guided fusion biopsy, whichever one you had, this biopsy result is crucial. It tells you many different things that you want to look at when you are early in that stage of learning about your prostate cancer. You want to know exactly what that biopsy is telling you. So the biopsy will tell you a couple of different things. One is it will show the Gleason score. This is equates into the aggressiveness of cancer or the risk of cancer. It's a number between 6 and 10. Uh, this can also be what's called an ISUP grading score, where a Gleason 6 is an ISUP grade group 1, a Gleason 7, 3 plus 4 is an ISUP. Two, a four plus three is an ISUP three, four plus four is a ISUP four, and Gleason nine and ten, these are ISUP five. So just a different grading score, but sometimes the pathologist will put this ISUP grading score and it just correlates with the Gleason score. It just gets more specific in this Gleason 7 area. So know the Gleason score. It equates essentially to the aggressiveness of your cancer or the risk of your prostate cancer. Many sixes, Gleason sixes, most of these cancers are watched because we know based on the biology of Gleason six, it's very rare for these Gleason six cancers to grow and invade into other structures. So a lot of people don't even consider an, a Gleason score six to be a typical type of cancer. So as you get closer to nines and tens, these are very aggressive cancers. These are cancers that grow and invade structures, get access to blood vessels and bones and the bloodstream. All of these things, the Gleason 8, 9, 10, these are aggressive cancers. So um, it's important to know that early on. Now, in addition to the Gleason score, the biopsy will also show you the volume of cancer. It's different when you have one out of 12 cores positive for cancer and you compare that to someone that has 10 out of 12 cores positive for cancer. This volume of cancer is an estimation of the amount of cancer that is present. And it's important to look at this to get an idea of your specific cancer to know your volume of cancer. The other thing on this biopsy that's important to look at is laterality. Are you dealing with a cancer on one side of the prostate or on both sides of the prostate potentially? Because treatments differ based on whether the cancer is local to one area or it's in numerous areas in that prostate. So laterality is important in knowing whether this is a right side, a left side, or a bilateral cancer. So that's the biopsy. These are important. It's important early on in your diagnosis to learn these things and get a better idea of where you are with regards to your Gleason score, your volume of cancer, and your laterality. So moving on to the next, x-rays. Most men get staging x-rays for prostate cancer, and the goal of these x-rays is to see is this cancer that's growing in the prostate, is this cancer just in the prostate or is it 
outside of the prostate? Is it in the lymph nodes? Is it in the bones? Has it spread distantly? And x-rays are what are used to stage you and find out how advanced that cancer is. Again, is it in the prostate or is it elsewhere? CT scan, bone scan, PET scan, MRI, those are the main x-rays that will be used to stage this. And again, important to know those results. Know not only what type of x-ray you're using, because some of these x-rays are not as good at picking up microscopic cancer like this. And so knowing the limitations of your x-rays is important. The next thing you want to know of is predictive nomograms. These are tools that have been used in prostate cancer for many, many, many years. And, and you essentially just plug in your data, your PSA, your clinical grade, your biopsy result, and your x-ray result, and you get information on the back. The three predictive nomograms that I like to use that I recommend are Parton tables, UCSF Capra score and Sloan Kettering prostate cancer nomogram. These are great tools to get a lot of information about your prostate cancer and it essentially shows you what your chances are that your cancer is localized, locally advanced or metastatic and then the Capra score also uses survival and age to look at prostate cancer survival. So these are helpful and again they just help you learn more about your specific type of prostate cancer. The next thing is genomics. Now we're in an age where there's a lot of development in genetic testing and genetic and in the understandings of genetics. Now genomics is taking the prostate tissue that was sent on biopsy or from your past specimen and actually looking at that specimen and looking at the genetic material that is in that specimen. There's numerous genetic tests that can be used. There is oncotype. DX, there's Prolaris, and there is Decipher. These are three main genomic tests. Your doctor will usually have a preference for one of these, but not that you absolutely need this, but again, this is an option to learn more about your prostate cancer using these genomic tests. Now, PSMA is also something that will likely be able to show prognosis. And so, you know, looking at does this cancer have PSMA expressed on the surface, that may also be something that's helpful in, again, learning more about your specific type of prostate cancer. So again, just a tool that you can use. Not everyone chooses to use this, but talk to your doctors about possibly using genomics, to, again, to learn more about your prostate cancer. And then the last thing is MRI. MRI has come a long way, especially three Tesla, higher, higher power magnet MRI that looks at the prostate and gets very good quality visualization of the prostate itself and then also looks at suspicious lesions in what are called pyrads. This is a classification system that classifies these suspicious lesions that are seen on MRI. MRI can be helpful to see are there other suspicious lesions present? What is the location of these lesions? Are they close to the capsule? Are they invading the seminal vesicles? Or is the lesion possibly outside of the capsule of the prostate? And then MRI is also great at looking for lymph nodes. Are there suspicious areas of lymph nodes that are enlarged that may be suspicious? suspicious for presence of cancer outside of the prostate and in other areas. So, you know, these are the five things early on in the diagnosis. It's important to know this information, your biopsy, your staging x-rays, your predictive nomograms, possibly genomics, and then possibly getting an MRI with another repeat biopsy if there's a suspicious lesion that's seen these lesions can be directed and targeted on an MRI guided biopsy again many options with prostate cancer it's important to be informed as a patient you want to be informed you want to know what's going on now I am Dr. Stiles I am a board certified urologist I am the prostate coach and I have developed a prostate cancer course the main goal of which is to prepare patients for their physician appointments, to help walk them through this information here so that they know more not only 
about prostate cancer in general, but they know more about their specific type of prostate cancer. So again, they're better prepared for their treatments. They're prepared for their physician appointments that they ultimately get the treatment that is right for you. And it comes a lot through education and information, and we're trying to give it in a simplified manner. We're trying to teach guys the early parts about prostate cancer to give them the tools so that they are more informed and can be better informed prostate cancer patients. So that's it. If this was helpful, if you know someone that's been diagnosed with prostate cancer, please hit that share button. Share this information with them. You never know how something like this could be helpful to them or be exactly what they need to help solve the issue that they're dealing with. So please share this and hit like, um, hit subscribe on our channel and we will get you more and more information talking about prostate cancer and how to help you with that diagnosis of prostate cancer. So again, I'm Dr. William Stiles. Thanks for watching.